Blue-white screening is a laboratory technique that uses specifically prepared bacterial cultures to isolate and purify DNA sequences that researchers want to work with their study. These sequences can be as short as several hundred bases or many thousands of bases long. To get the fragment into bacterial cells, a cloning vector is used. Cloning vectors are bacterial plasmids that have been engineered to behave in ways that aid in the transfer and isolation of DNA when used with specifically selected bacterial strains. For blue-white screening, the strains used have a deletion in their LAC-Z gene, which prevents them from being able to split the disaccharide lactose into its constituent parts, glucose and galactose. Because the DNA in these plasmids have been modified, vectors are an example of recombinant DNA. Recombinant DNA sequences are sequences that are made up of fragments of DNA taken from different sources. Recombining DNA in this way allows researchers to create sequences with features or functions not found in the source material. For blue-white screening, the vector requires four features. An origin of replication to allow the host cell to make copies of the plasmid, a gene encoding for antibiotic resistance. In this case, the plasmid includes the AMP-R gene, which when expressed gives the host cells resistance to the antibiotic ampicillin. These two features are common in many different cloning vectors. For blue-white screening, the vector must also contain a fragment of the LAC-Z gene, which is part of the LAC operon. The LAC operon is the set of genes E. coli and many other bacteria use to transport and metabolize lactose. The product of LAC-Z is the enzyme beta-galactosidase, which is responsible for cutting the disaccharide lactose into galactose and glucose. The screening in blue-white screening uses resistance to ampicillin to determine if cells contain a plasmid and the presence or absence of beta-galactosidase activity to determine whether or not the plasmid contains the target sequence. The final important feature is that the fragment of the LAC-Z gene has been altered so there is a multiple cloning site near the beginning of the sequence. This site, also called a polylinker, contains the recognition sites for a number of restriction enzymes. This makes it possible for the vector to be further engineered by cutting it with restriction enzymes and then using ligase to place additional fragments of DNA into that site. A more recent but very widely used variation of blue-white screening is called TOPO-TA cloning. In this variation, the multiple cloning site includes T overhangs, which allow PCR products to be directly inserted in the gap with the enzyme topoisomerase. There are variations in the way different researchers do blue-white screening, but in all cases, the process starts with a procedure to modify the original vector by cloning the target sequence into the polylinker region at the beginning of the LAC-Z fragment. This is done by cutting the vector restriction enzymes that linearize it in the polylinker region. The target DNA is also cut with restriction enzymes so that it has ends compatible with the ends in the vector. The two fragments are then combined using DNA ligase. If the TOPO-TA system is used, the vector comes from the supplier in linear form with single-based deoxythymidine overhangs and the topoisomerase enzyme already present on both ends of the sequence. In this approach, the target strand of DNA is created by PCR because the enzyme used in PCR adds a single overhanging deoxyadenosine base at both ends of the sequence. Toporisomerase is then able to close the vector by connecting these two fragments at the complementary T and A overhangs. The goal of this preliminary step is to modify the original vector by inserting the sequence of interest into the polylinker region. This whole process occurs in a small microcentrifuge tube, and if it works, the researchers end up with a mixture that contains a few copies of the desired vector mixed in with copies of the cut vector, the DNA fragment, and because the enzymatic reactions involved are not perfect, there may also be some copies of the original vector present. The next step requires getting the desired vector into bacterial cells that can then be used to manufacture large quantities of the desired sequence. The technique used to get a plasmids into bacterial cells is called transformation. It involves starting with a culture of bacterial cells that have been specifically grown in a way to make it more likely they will take up the plasmids. These are called competent cells. These cells are combined with the vector reaction mixture and given a heat shock to create the conditions where some of the plasmids are able to pass into the cells through their outer membranes. After the transformation, the tubes of competent cells will contain a mixture, including some cells that do not contain a plasmid because they did not take up any DNA, 
cells that have taken up the original vector, and others that have the desired vector with the target fragment inserted into the polylinker region. The goal of blue-white screening is to isolate and identify cells that have this desired vector. To accomplish this, cells from the transformation are spread onto an agar plate. The plate contains the nutrients needed for all the cells to grow, but if this was all that was in the plates, there would be no way to select for cells that contain the desired vector because all of the cells that survived the transformation process would grow. So in addition to the nutrients, the antibiotic the vector encodes resistance for is added, which in this case is ampicillin. Ampicillin creates conditions where only cells with a vector will grow, eliminating cells with no vector. This is the first round of screening, and while the antibiotic ensures that all the growing cells have taken up a plasmid, it does not discriminate between the cells that have the original vector and the ones that contain the vector with the insert. Telling these apart requires an additional layer of screening. For this, the compound Xgal is added. Xgal is a galactose bound to a ring structure called an indole. Xgal's chemical similarity to lactose allows the enzyme beta-galactosidase to cleave it. Once cleaved, the indole ring structures combine to form a dark blue insoluble pigment. To understand why Xgal is used, consider the two possible vectors that are giving the surviving cells resistance to ampicillin. They both contain the LAXE fragment, but one has the target sequence inserted in it near the beginning of the coding region, rendering the gene non-functional. So cells with the insert will not exhibit any beta-galactosidase activity, while cells that have the unmodified vector will have the active enzyme. This means that as individual cells grow into colonies on the plate, the color of any individual colony will indicate which vector the cells carry. The blue colonies are able to cleave the Xgal, indicating that they have a functional LAC-Z gene and therefore contain the original vector, which is not wanted. In contrast, the white colonies are white due to their inability to degrade the Xgal, indicating they have the vector containing the desired insert. So picking a white colony will provide the starting material to grow large quantities of cells containing the target DNA. We know these cells have a plasmid because they have resistance to ampicillin, and that the plasmid has an insert inside the LAG-Z gene because the cells are not able to break down Xgal. In addition to Xgal, many protocols call for the addition of a compound called IPTG. Like Xgal, IPTG shows some structural similarities to lactose. Unlike Xgal, it is not acted on by beta-galactosidase, but its structural similarity to lactose makes it an inducer of the lac operon. Using it ensures that the cells will try to produce beta-galactosidase even in the absence of lactose. It is not always used for the type of standard blue-white screening described here, but it is required for some modifications of the technique, including the use of this type of vector to synthesize proteins using the LAC-Z promoter, or with suicide vectors, which replace the LAC-Z gene with a gene that encodes for a compound lethal to the cells.